Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Obviously, I'm home today. I hope the start of your day is as good as it possibly can be, and you might ask, why am I home? Well, unfortunately, I am a little under the weather, and we all know in these times, being under the weather is not a good thing, but you also have to make sure that when you're not feeling good, that you're not going out and spreading it to others. So yes, I have a low fever, flu-like symptoms, some respiratory things. I'm certainly hoping it's not uh, COVID. Uh, we'll have to see how things go over the next few days, but the fact is is that uh, I'm feeling a little bit rough. Um, my crew is doing a great job. They're going to be filming and bringing you along because I don't want to stop the vlog. I know this is a, a distraction for you guys, and I appreciate you so much. I'm going to be fine again, low level, and unfortunately, in this country right now, if you don't have a fever over 100.5, you can't get tested, so that's a bizarre thing. So I'm just going to see how things go. For today, I'll be checking in with you guys, uh, turning you over to Jay and Lori and everyone else, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys updated on how I'm feeling. Uh, again, I'm going to rest up and hopefully I'll be back to normal soon, and hopefully I can kick this fever and this feeling. Uh, yes, it is scary in these times to feel like this, but uh, I, uh, I want to continue to be here for you guys. So let's just have a good day together, and uh, I'll check back with you a little bit later in the vlog. season is in full force uh, lots to do but that being said this part is the exciting part because we get to decide what we want to breed and what kind of projects we're gonna work with so I want to show you a couple things that I'm kind of excited about we've got a few different scaleless mutations that we got last year this one wasn't big enough to breed last year but she is this year so this is actually a amber motley scaleless corn I'm a big fan of the ambers uh, put that in the scaleless and it's pretty crazy uh, what I'm breeding her to is a male scaleless, but he also, you know, is het for amber motley and opal stripe. Uh, she is possible het for opal. So we've got some pretty crazy things that could potentially pop out of those. Um, so fingers crossed, we get some good clutches and uh, those are the fun ones because it could be a variety of different things. These are something that both Brian and I like a lot. So Abbott's Okatee Corns. So you're just like, okay, it's Okatee Corn, but that Abbott's has such a distinct coloration on them with that bright red and that black saddles. So we've got a nice group of males and females that, uh, that we are putting together. But I'm excited to produce some of these guys. They're just really pretty. Another thing that we've been raising up for a while are different new groups of cow kings. Uh, past, in the past, we used to produce a lot and we kind of got out of them and decided to raise some more back up. So I've got a few different groups. We've actually got our lavender snow cows, which if any of you have followed us for any period of time, you'll know we are actually the ones that first produced these. It's a mixture of the lavender cow king with the snow cow king uh, so basically you've got that lavender color and then you're taking away the pattern they can vary a lot too so here's another male that is a little bit more purple and that's really uh, what we had worked for and a lot of people do is there is an extreme purple uh, version of them to where they're the really dark lavender and then patternless so I've got those males and then I've got some other females that are het uh, or double hat for lavender snow. Another last one are these mosaic cows. We've been working with these for years too. It took a couple years off. I've got a really nice group of these guys. They're very popular. Obviously you've got that black with that really cool patterning on the sides. So they make for very pretty babies. See, there's one of the males. Again, that black with the white, but just has that really mosaic kind of pattern. That's how it gets the name. But they're really known, the nicer ones have the really nice black stripe. So yeah, that's a few things that I'm excited for this year. He said you're hard to work with. Awesome. 
Oh, uh, well, see, well, well, on camera, yeah. Yeah. And real life. Anyways, awesome. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Oh, okay, wait. <laughs> You're recording. Yes. Oh, um, this is right, okay. And actually relatively nicely day outside not sunny or anything like that but the temperature is warm it's telling me that uh, spring is here and uh, we're starting to warm up and uh, that's something I can look forward to you know I love the weather out here and uh, Speedy's gonna be out here pretty soon that's always something that I love coming home sitting by my pond watching Speedy uh, it's something that I can look forward to and that's one of the things I think we all have to do right now is almost mentally fast forward in time to get past the things that we're kind of freaking out about right now isolation staying at home uh, sheltering in place all those things this will pass and just let's try to mentally think what are we gonna do when we get past this you know and that's one of the things that I've been trying to think of is like what is life gonna be like what is the first thing I'm gonna do let me know down in the comments the first thing you guys want to do when you know it's starting to lighten up I mean you know whether it's going out to the movies or I, I don't know what to do but I know I have so many things in my head that I want to do so those are the things that are keeping my spirits up even in the times when it's kind of dire and uh, certainly on a day like Today where I'm not feeling that well. I've been reading and, and actually watching a lot of a lot of keepers recently. They, they've been they've been sort of attesting to actually hand feeding a lot of their monitors instead of using like tongs and stuff like that. And I personally think this actually could be pretty beneficial to not only us but also our animals. We always want to want to grow. We want to be better. We want to be better keepers and we want to be better. Uh, we want to be better at our own husbandry. So uh, today I'm actually going to try Uwasuku. And as you guys all know, she's my baby, she's my girl, I love her to death, she'll always, always be one of my favorite animals here. I'm gonna try her first. We're gonna try and want and go walk around and do everybody else, and you guys will see that as I go along, but she's the one that I wanna try out first. Don't try this at home, I don't really know what's about to happen, but it, it might actually be kind of fun to see what, what which, how she reacts to it too. This isn't really about sensationalism. We don't really want like to just sit there and be like, oh look, I'm almost getting bit, but I didn't get bit, bro, ha ha ha. This isn't really about that. This is more about trying to bridge the gap between like, like a aggressive feeding and, and, and taking food easily. By feeding these guys by hand and everything, it, it actually teaches them to take things a little slower and not to be so, so greedy when they grab the food all the time. Because guess what? Just like me and anybody else, you don't want to you don't want to get bit. So handing them the food, you're, you're naturally going to, going to pull away if you think you're going to get bit. So when you start to sort of fight that urge to pull away and also watch how their physical reactions are, you can actually figure out when's the right time to hand them that food. And they're reading that same thing. As you guys see here, Ubisuku is really, really, like she's tracking really well. She's ticking it so gently. It's pretty incredible to actually see an animal that we've, we've, we've had for so long, that's been so aggressive for so long, literally take food from my hand like a puppy dog. It's, it's pretty cool to watch. Big reason why we're showing you guys us doing this also with salt and pepper is, is, is we want the same thing here with salt and pepper, just like we do with our monitors. We want these guys to be our, our, our buddies, our pets. By doing the hand feedings, by doing the, the callings, everything here, it's just like with the monitors just like with the alligators, just like with the iguanas. We all want all of our animals to interact with us and we want that interaction to be as close as we can get to it. Hope you guys are still enjoying the vlog even though that I'm not there. Trust me, it uh, is very painful for me not to be with my animals and with everything in the normalcy. I uh, I hate it. It's, uh, you know, idle minds, uh, the whole thing, you know, sitting here worrying about what is going on and what's the future going to be uh, is, is difficult. So I wish I was there with the animals, but again, uh, I'm doing okay. I'm going to be be fine I'm sure soon uh, if the, my fever gets over 100.5 I can get checked and see if uh, there's a chance I have the virus if not hopefully my temperature goes away here later and I'm back to work within the next day or two so uh, I am uh, going to continue to try to be as positive as I can in these trying times and I hope that you guys are enjoying uh, in my absence I know I'll be enjoying watching the footage and I wish that I was there for everything there's so many animals I miss right now I think oh I wish I could be playing with Bella um, or seeing how Beetlejuice juice or again ivy is getting ready to shed and i'm not there but uh again we have to try to be positive in these times and we have to just uh try to get through them and i will be fine i'm sure and all your positive energy and thoughts with me that's going to help me out a lot too so uh again back to the shop and uh, let's see what those guys have going on can, can you just pause okay wait pause it so i usually wrap okay wait <clears throat> So today I'm over here at BHB. Usually you guys know I work at the Reptarium. Can we pause really You're quick? doing great. We need Jam's more. <laughs> so as you guys know, I'm usually over at the Reptarium, but since we're closed there temporarily, I get the opportunity of working at BHB. Today we are scrubbing a whole bunch of tubs. Um, it is an endless cycle around here. As you guys know, we have a crazy amount of animals. And with breeding season coming up, we need more clean tubs for the new babies to go in. So that's what I'm doing today.
since I'm home, I pop into my incubator room because you know we're just about a week, 10 days away from the first ball python egg. So just getting everything kind of fired up here. Usually it takes a week or so to get the temperatures kind of regulated in here. So just turned on the thermostat, turned on the heat, and uh, hopefully within a few days, this whole room will be 88 to 89 degrees. And like I mentioned here in a week, 10 days or so, we're gonna get our first ball python clutches. Working a little bit with the baby ball pythons today too, and this one really jumped out at me. This is actually a pastel vanilla bamboo woma. Oh my gosh, that thing is insanely cool. Remember that really cool ball python clutch I hatched out that was clowns? This is actually a super pastel, lesser leopard clown ball python with a little paradox spotting on it. This whole clutch was absolutely ridiculous. And there's a lot of variability when it comes to pastel clown ball pythons. I know this actually looks like it's a super pastel or what they would call a killer clown, but believe it or not, it's just a really beautiful pastel leopard clown ball python that really does does look like a super, but uh, this one has just got one gene of pastel in it. One of the things that I find really interesting is sometimes when you take away a gene, it can actually add to the kind of overall beauty of a ball python, believe it or not. This is just a lesser leopard clown ball python, so it doesn't have the pastel gene in it, and without that pastel gene, the colors actually pop a little bit more. As the day is winding down, I've got my tea and honey, and uh, I'm feeling okay. I'm hanging in there. Hopefully by tomorrow, I'll start to feel a little bit better, but I definitely want to make sure that I'm keeping everyone around me safe. So I appreciate everyone kind of sticking in there with me and giving me good wishes. And I appreciate the crew for making sure everything's okay while I'm gone. Uh, if you want to spend some more time, we do a podcast called Checking In. Right over in this corner, you can actually subscribe to that channel. Over on this side, right over here, you can roll through a bunch of playlists of uh, vlogs and stuff like that. You can subscribe to the vlog channel over here and turn the post notifications on. Again, guys, I'm sure I'll be fine within the next day or two. I appreciate your support. Love you guys. Have the best day you possibly can. Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.